I will be speaking in a modest way about big modeling. Um, and uh, the complementarity is very much there between what uh, Robert just uh, presented and what you will see. Um, I, I'm coming to this issue of the hybrid and uh, freed models uh, from a slightly strange perspective uh, somewhere back in 2011 when I was running an organization, we started to do what became uh, named as uh, hybrid, even MOOC at that time, as a name did not exist because I think it was somewhere in 2013 when uh, the companies you mentioned, Branislav, uh, Edix and uh, Coursera, uh, stepped forward. And we were experimenting in a way where uh, we enrolled the uh, students and uh, the increase annually was an exponential increase. So 250, 500, 1,000 practically being one of the 100 organizations of the UN system, you can uh, calculate the potential in it and, and it, it in a way infected me. So this is the angle I am coming. The other angle is uh, what Robert uh, called uh, wicked problems, uh, global challenges and uh, the, the concern that um, we, have, uh, uh, we have an issue there, and, and uh, I would like to come to that. Uh, my presentation is based on a concept where uh, an important uh, contribution was made by a friend of mine. His name is Professor Theodor Poulos. He's not here. Uh, I'm not happy because uh, whatever questions you will ask on the technical side, uh, I might not be able to, to answer, but I will do my best. Um, the uh, first approach to, to this whole issue might be this hype cycle uh, for education, and uh, my point is that I do not want to go into that direction. So I do not want to explain, because I'm not an expert, those, those uh, upcoming um, tools and technologies which you see on this hype cycle uh, how they might help the students and how they might uh, enhance education. And uh, this hype cycle is changing each year, as you can, you can see. Uh, what is more interesting uh, for me to come to this whole issue of how we can uh, uh, deploy a system of system approach, a complex system approach, how we can approach uh, modeling uh, from this notion of the SOS, where uh, again, the, the wicked problems are becoming uh, more neglected and because of the uh, complicated um, uh, effect of, uh, of strengthening each other, clustering, uh, there is a criticality issue, criticality on separate issues like climate change and criticality as they come together. And uh, there were some examples I would like to mention because of the talk how climate change and global warming is enabling certain um, uh, vectors of, uh, of viruses like mosquitoes to bring um, uh, tropical diseases to parts of the world where even we are living right now. Mosquito-borne diseases and, uh, and uh, West Nile virus, Zika type of things. But this is just an example about this intersection. Of course, uh, you have many others and we don't have the time to go into that. Besides the criticality of everything becoming like a big bowl of spaghetti, uh, too much, uh, too much uh, untangible, financial gaps, and then there was the reference to, okay, mod modeling the, the problem and modeling the intervention. And uh, once you get there, through measuring and then through modeling, then you understand that the mitigation part is not being done, uh, the modeling part is not being done in the uh, overwhelming majority of these um, uh, global challenges, with the exception probably of the climate change, and even measurement is not being done. I can use an uh, example, it's not an anecdotal one, but I survived myself. <laughs> when SDGs were replacing MDGs, in 2015, uh, there was no measurement uh, reporting out as a baseline of the MDGs. So in a way, the SDG was hanging uh, in the air without any uh, coupling uh, in between the two, and because of that, it will be very difficult to look back. Um, the use, uh, uh, there is no more time. 
um, based on what you see as a positive sign, uh, the uh, climate rebellion, uh, so millions of young people in the streets, the re rebellion without the climate, so if, uh, if we, are, we are watching evening news, and, and it's practically everywhere, it's, it's blowing up. Uh, as we speak, it's blowing up. Uh, the the uh, uh, young people are in the streets, radicalization, um, at, at universities in, in bigger countries, be it not just US but other countries as well, uh, there, is a, there is a clear radicalization be it based on what, it, what we see. Um, coming, coming, back, um, coming back to uh, why this uh, um, approach with, with big modeling uh, might be relevant besides the points of, of Robert, we need force multipliers. There is no money in the system. Um, the, um, the issues are understaffed, so there is no e not enough capacity to, to handle them. So you need force multipliers, and modeling in an integrated way is one way of lining up additional um, uh, uh, ammunition. The uh, need for it, the rationale is clear, fragmentation everywhere, I don't have the time to go into that. Whichever issue you take, diseases, um, fragmentation plant and animal and human health uh, between G7 and G20 and all-inclusive organizations, fragmentation, overlap, overlap between uh, those um, uh, entities which are to, to intervene. So this is the rationale for what we call big modeling, a more integrated approach. And one way of looking upon it at, at, at R11, you see the, sorry, at R11, you see the uh, classical educational component of an uh, ecosystem for, for big modeling. But the idea is to pull together uh, all these elements uh, which can uh, contribute to what might be uh, along the lines as, uh, I, I think Robert, you just named it and you, <laughs> you might see <laughs> as well the, the idea here, uh, how to pull together different uh, components. Um, uh, domain uh, uh, owners like think tanks and research institutions and the model holders and the high performance computing platform and uh, modeling entities and ICT and, and, and other uh, companies. Uh, and there might be two ways of, uh, of merging it. Uh, one is the platform part, uh, which uh, Robert explained, and the critically important part is the networking. So how you power the system you described, how this, um, this uh, very sophisticated HPC-based um, big modeling uh, configuration might work. And uh, I think, uh, for me, this is more interesting from an educational point of view, more interesting from the point of view how the two can be coupled, where in the absence of hands, in the absence of money, uh, we can use uh, tertiary, and not just tertiary, but secondary education as well to practically power uh, this, uh, this uh, big um, uh, modeling system. Um, that's uh, something which I, I think, uh, in a way, um, uh, Robert was alluding to. This is a high-level view of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of practically a, a platform of platforms and uh, models pulled together in a melting pot, and uh, all the different models are addressing different issues, and they are uh, complementary. And uh, whichever issue you like to focus on, you can turn around because if you would like to focus on, on, uh, on climate change, you can have the inputs of uh, uh, trade and migration and, and, uh, and uh, like uh, uh, disease uh, situation. If you look upon it from a disease point of view, again, you can, uh, you can have the right configuration for your requirements. Uh, there is an architectural part of it as well, and, uh, and that, uh, that would be interesting to, to, to see. Uh, this is something where I think uh, because of the investments around uh, US, China, and the EU, there's a lot of money being spent. And as in many cases, uh, there is a need to find new applications. So practically, especially in this high power computing area, uh, people are hungry on the hardware side to see exactly how it will be used, or like with 5G, uh, for example. So this is one of the application areas for some of the uh, systems which I described here. 
Uh, what I would like to uh, refer to is uh, how uh, big modeling might be applied to something like uh, early warning system for monitoring of vector-borne diseases. And uh, I don't have the time to go into too many details, but just to give you a taste that, um, yes, it can be done uh, in a way where we are practically, with the right incentivization, mobilizing uh, a, a massive number of additional hands, meaning tertiary st uh, students or students in the secondary even system, or people who are enrolled in, uh, in uh, vocal training, okay? Uh, the way to, to do it is probably uh, very much dependent upon incentivization, and one incentivization might be in case universities and tertiary institutions find a way across the board to have a recognition of, um, of certain credits which might be earned as a result of doing input work package element as a result of breaking down uh, a problem, and here you have a, a bit of a breakdown structure in a, in a matrix form, where if you go deeper, then these type of things can be done by students from the medical uh, university, uh, human medicine, veterinary medicine, those dealing with plant diseases, and the incentivization issue is, what is it for them in it? And there must be something, of, of course it can be working on the Wikipedia principles as well where they are proud of, of doing it. And, and I, I'm very happy that uh, Kaka uh, is here who is, who is uh, the president of the university association. So this is something I'm sure that uh, they have been discussing how to have this wide recognition of, 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 of credits. Uh, the other element is, of course, financial incentivization, and the two can uh, work together. So I, I will not uh, have the time to go into, into details, but practically what you see in the matrix and we, what you see here is uh, with red color all the elements which can be as input helping monitoring of uh, new diseases uh, practically to be delivered uh, by this massive support of students. Where it is different from the present uh, model, in my understanding, uh, there are certain elements which exist, uh, like medical universities, hospitals, where students are practically practicing, practicing uh, with, uh, in real life with real patients and doing uh, real things under the right supervision and the instructions. So imagine the hospital is practically the, the real world where, uh, again, these uh, newly emerging diseases are there and some of the students are practically doing uh, this, uh, uh, this practicing job. The last point um, is uh, this one. Uh, this is the number of uh, students projected uh, to be enrolled in tertiary education in 2030, which is the time frame for the uh, SDGs. Uh, the number is doubling compared to 2015. So in 2015, it was around 200 million people enrolled, and in 2030, it will be pretty close to 400. It's doubling each 15 years. So besides uh, get giving a meaningful education which is affordable uh, to, to these uh, students, the idea is that uh, even 1% of these numbers is representing 2 million additional pairs of hands lined up behind issues which are totally and dangerously critically neglected. I stop Thank here. Thank you very much. <laughs>